guys, Eric here with you from the uh, Northern Wind Workshop and today for my promised build video I'm going to make a knife bevel filing jig uh, based off the uh, jig I saw in a video from Go Customs. The only difference between my jig and, well two differences between my jig and the one that he made is he made his out of half inch birch ply. I'm using stuff. This is three-quarter um, pine board that I already had so I didn't have to buy more wood just to make a jig and uh, since he's using birch ply he threads the uh, screw eye uh, directly into the wood whereas I'm going to be using these uh, quarter 20 T nuts uh, to make the jig more durable now it does make for more work for making the jig but I would rather screw metal threads into metal instead of soft pine which can eventually strip out or yeah it's soft wood so but anyways on to the build all right so as far as materials you're going to need for this build <clears throat> obviously um, you're going to need uh, some cut pieces of wood now the main body of the jig is going to be a 14 by I made mine two and a half inches wide uh, and then um, the uh, this piece also two and a half because this is going to go on top of this but this is a it's a 10 inch piece and this one is also a 14 inch piece just for simplicity's sake now once everything is drilled and the t-nuts are installed and all that and I'll get to that later in the video um, can you tell I don't do many build videos? Uh, it's going to look something like this. So, all these T-nuts, those guys, are going to be on the under, coming up from the underside of these two boards so that when you run the screw eye down into them, they're not going to just pull out by using the file or what have you. So, uh, I'm sure if you're watching this video, you know the theory behind this jig. I'm just laying out the basics here. So you're going to be drill drilling a series of holes down the center of this board. And then also, I made this board wider than he did. This is a 4-inch wide board. So I'm going to have two rows of screw holes so that I can put any size knife on this jig and not have to worry about it. Um, so you're going to obviously need, uh, some metal rod. The rod's going to go through the screw eye as you're doing your filing. And I picked up an 8-inch cobalt flat file. It was only $8 over at Lowe's, so I'm going to start with this. Eventually I'll be getting myself a better quality file, but this is much better than Harbor Freight garbage, which I tried before. So what you'll be doing is you'll be using the hose clamps to attach your file to the steel rod. I used a three-quarter inch uh, Forstner bit to clearance the uh, widest part of these T-nuts so that the uh, two boards will glue together flat. And as you can see, they fit just fine. Uh, I'm getting a little anal retentive here, but uh, at the same time, I'm just trying to make the process easier for me. I get into the fine details of a project and stuff like this happens, so you know, what are you going to do? The nice little bonus though of running the Forstner bit into the wood first is you ha already have a nice little dimple where you're going to drill your holes for the barrel of the T-nut to fit through. Now I'm also going to probably have to drill holes for these little spikes so that I'm not splitting the wood all over the place but I'm not going to bore you guys with 14,000 little drill holes so back in a sec I've hammered 
hammered home all of the uh, tea nuts and <clears throat> realized a little after the fact that well, it's all well and good to have a tea nut for the eye bolt to screw into, but what if the height that you need on the eye bolt at any given position goes through the thickness of the wood? Like that. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to use this piece as a template. mark the body so each hole I'm going to uh, <clears throat> use one of these handy dandy little markers that will actually fit through the hole and mark where I'm going to drill clearance in the body. Now for these holes I started closest to where the knife board is going to be and I went an inch and a half up every hole just to give me several different uh, choices for bevel angles. Um, nothing is measured out to specific degrees based on the height of the eye bolt or any of that. Um, I'm not that technical. But what it does do is, depending on where you screw in your eye bolt, it's going to give you adjustable height so that when you run your rod through it and your knife is down here, uh, you can adjust the pitch of that angle very easily just by adjusting the height and or position of the eye bolt. Okay, so we've gotten to the point where now uh, you've seen me cut the guide rod. Oh, that, is a, that is a horrible sound. I'm going to have to do something about that. Um, what you want to do when you're cutting your guide rod is you want to have enough length so that even at the uh, farthest position for the eye bolt, you want to have enough rod so you can still get the full throw of whatever file you're using. So I'm going to stop with the horrible noise, because that's something I'm going to have to figure out later. Uh, the reason that you keep hearing me be surprised by things is I'm literally making this project as I'm showing you how. So this is the first time I've ever built one, so I'm figuring out these little hiccups and quirks and things like that. So that I can go, okay, this happened to me, this is how I fixed it, you might find a better way. So what I did is I made these little blocks. These will go between the guide rod and the file. And um, it made it easier to uh, attach the uh, hose clamps. I also hammered the, I test fit these, and I hammered them flat so that they fit the shape of the file better. So let's throw all that together. So as you see, the blocks are going to keep the file separate from the guide rod and the hose clamps are going to go right where the blocks are. Because that just makes the most sense for the attachment point. Okay, so that part is built. Now, that obviously wasn't very hard, but if you've never built one of these before, you kind of want to see it step by step. That's why I liked uh, 
Go Custom uh, videos, he was very methodical about how he put this together. This part is done, now I still have to put all the uh, T-nuts in this part, and then glue and screw everything together, and it'll be ready to use. Alright, pretty much just doing uh, assembly. Now, uh, don't need to be super precise with those screw holes as long as it holds everything together unless you need your jig to look pretty. I don't, I just need it to work. I'm using the square to tell me where the edge of the body uh, board is underneath the knife board. Now, I'm making up these terms. I've not heard them in any video, but it helps me to uh, differentiate between the pieces of the jig so that I know what I'm working on and you guys can uh, also know what I'm working on. I don't know. I tend to over explain. I'm going to call it good for now. Um, I had tried to figure out where I wanted to put all these extra T-nuts. Um, and I'm still going to have to work that out. But for now, I'm just going to clamp the knife on, use a wood screw to hold the knife. Uh, give me something to butt up against to when I'm doing a drop line. So that way I can pretty much put the knife wherever I want. And it's good to go. So, I'm going to call this build video done. Uh, if you guys have any questions or comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comments. And let me know what you think. If you have, if you see something I should have done that I didn't or did something that I shouldn't have, let me know. That's how we learn. We share information with each other. Alright guys, and as always, more to come.